Hello and welcome back to Sovereign RPG. Path of Exile 2 is on the horizon and we're diving deep into the newly revealed Ascendancy nose by the developers Grinding Gear Games. Today we're dissecting the Stormweaver. Are you ready to unleash elemental chaos on your foes? Let me know in the comments which nodes you're most excited about and if you find this breakdown helpful, smash that like button and subscribe for more Path of Exile 2 content. Now remember, we can only choose four out of the 10 large nodes. This is because we have to go through the small nodes which count as one of the eight points to get to those certain abilities so we'll need to plan our builds carefully this limited selection adds another layer of strategy to our ascendancy choices which i quite like although i can see there's going to be some people that won't be happy with this do you think we need the ability to have more large nodes let me know down below first up we have scouring winds exposure inflict lowers the affected resistance by an additional 20 percent now veterans of path of exile know how crucial resistances are in end game content this node is a huge boost to your damage especially against bosses and tough rings is. Let's illustrate this with an example. Imagine you're fighting a boss with 75% cold resistance, applying a curse that will lower their resistance to 49%. With scouring winds, that resistance plummets further to 29%. That's a massive increase in your effective cold damage. And that can also work with your fire and your lightning spell. Remember, exposure in Path of Exiles 2 works similarly to how it did in PoE 1, at least as far as I know. It's a powerful debuff that lowers enemy resistances to a specific element. Stacking scouring winds with other sources of exposure like curses or hexes or, or items with enemies have minus X percent to X resistance modifiers can shred even the toughest enemy defenses. Some examples of items and skills that grant exposure include curses, flammability, frostbite, conductivity, unique items like Eye of Malice and Free Dragons, skills like Wave of Conviction and Elemental Weakness. That makes Scouring Winds a must-have for any build that focuses on dealing elemental damage, especially against high-resistance enemies. Next, we have the Tempest Caller, which grants you the Elemental Storm skill. Trigger Elemental Storm on critical hits with spells. This creates a stationary storm at the target location, dealing either fire, cold, or lightning damage based on the highest elemental damage of your hit. This has a fantastic layer of consistent AoE damage to your spell casting. Elemental Storm seems to function similarly to existing skills like Vortex or Cold Snap, but with the added flexibility of adapting to your highest damage type, this opens up some amazing possibilities for builds that utilize multiple elements. And to make Elemental Storm even better, we have Rain Dancer. Elemental Storm has 150% more cooldown recovery rate. This isn't a simple 160% increased cooldown recovery rate. The more multiplier makes a huge difference. The word increased is additive, while more is multiplicative. So with 10% increased cooldown recovery rate from the passive tree and 150% more cooldown recovery rate from Rain Dancer, we get 10% times 2.5 equals 25% increased cooldown recovery rate. This means Elemental Storm will be available much more frequently, especially when combined with other sources of increased cooldown recovery speed. Imagine a build with significant cooldown recovery speed investment, perhaps using skills like Cyclone or Cast on Critical Strike to trigger Elemental Storm rapidly. Rain Dancer could make this skill incredibly spammable. Blanket in the screen with Elemental Destruction. Now let's talk about Chill and Shock. Heavy Snows allows you to apply two chills simultaneously. Targets can be affected by two of your chills at the same time. Time. Your chills can reduce action speed by up to a maximum of 35%. 25% less magnitude of the chill you inflict. This is a significant change from Path of Exile 1 where only one chill could affect a target at a time. Dual chills mean more consistent slowing and a higher chance to completely freeze enemies solid, even with the slight reduction in chill magnitude. This could be particularly effective against bosses who often have high cold resistance. Now we have Shaper of Winter. All damage from hits contribute to chill magnitude. This is huge, like huge. In Path of Exile 1, only hits that dealt cold damage could chill. This node opens up exciting possibilities for chilling with any elemental type damage. Similarly, Strike Twice lets you stack two shocks. Targets can be affected by two of your shocks at the same time with 50% less shock duration. While the shock duration is reduced, the increased frequency should more than compensate, leading to a near permanent increase in damage against shocked enemies. And mirroring Shaper of Winter, we have Shaper of Storms. All damage from hits contributes to shock chance, just like with Chill. This allows you to shock with any damage type, opening up new avenues for shocking builds. Now with Shaper of Storms and Shaper of Winter, fire-based characters can now utilize chill and shock effectively. 
even while focusing on ignite and burning damage. This could lead to some very interesting build possibilities. Now how strong that will be really depends on what we get when the game is released. So finally let's look at the mana and energy shield sustain nodes. Constant Gale grants you arcane surge. Arcane surge grants 10% more car speed and 20% more mana regeneration rate. Having arcane surge baseline is a fantastic quality of life improvement for any spellcaster. Force of will scales the effect of arcane surge based on your maximum mana. 1% increased effect of arcane surge on you per 15 maximum mana. This encourages investment in mana, further boosting your car speed and mana regeneration. This could synergize incredibly well with the Archmage support gem, which grants spell damage based on your unreserved mana. Imagine a build with high mana, Archmage support and force of will, you'd have incredible damage output and sustain. And lastly, we have Heart of the Storm. Heart of the Storm provides some much needed survivability for spellcasters. 40% of elemental damage taken recouped as energy shield. This helps mitigate the inherent squishiness of many spellcasters, especially in the early game. This node could be particularly valuable in encounters with heavy elemental damage, such as against certain bosses or in maps with elemental modifiers. So there you have it, a deep dive into the newly revealed Ascendancy nodes of the Stormweaver. What are your thoughts? Which nodes are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Path of Exiles 2 content. I'll be doing one of these videos for every Ascendancy, so make sure to subscribe, fly safe, and avoid local chat scams.